Creating multiplayer games isn't as hard as it seems. Unity provides simple and free solution called Netcode for game objects. It supports both 2D and 3D games and you can have up to 16 players per multiplayer session. Later, you can connect it with other multiplayer services such as lobby, matchmaking, leaderboards and much more. To start, make sure that you have at least Unity version 2021.3 and we can start by downloading the package, so go to the package manager, hit the plus icon, add package by name and just type com unity netcode game objects. Just like that and hit add. Once you have the package installed, we can continue with setting up our player and the network manager, which is the essential component to make the netcode for game objects work. So in my scene, I will create empty game object and call it network manager. I will add the network manager component to it. You can see a bunch of settings here, but the only thing that we care about is the player prefab and the network transport. The best thing about netcode for game objects is that it is modular. So either you can use the Unity servers, you can use Steam servers or any other servers that you have and you don't need to change single line of code. All you need to do is select a different transport. So for now we will select the Unity transport. So we can see that it automatically added this component and the next thing that we will set up is the player. So I will make a prefab out of it. Just drag the player to the project, select the network manager and drag in the player prefab. At any time when new player joins the game, it is automatically going to instantiate the player prefab, so we can remove the player from the scene and we'll go to the player prefab. For all of the objects that we want to have in the network, so all of the clients will be able to access it, as well as the server, we need to add component network object, which just tells Unity that this is a object that should be on the network. Once we have the component added, we can go back to the scene and try playing the game. And it tells us that this scene has to be in the build list, so we can just hit yes, so it is automatically going to add this scene to the build. Right now, nothing is really happening in the game, because we either have to connect as a server, host or client. Server is just an entity that is handling all of the data and the operations that should be happening in the game. Client is just your normal game user, who can actually play the game, move and so on. And host is client with a server combined, so he can play the game and all of the operations and the data are running through the host. So to join the game, we'll need to go to the don't destroy on load because we can see the network manager got added here. We can select it and now we have a few buttons. So for now I will select the host because the server can't really see anything and the client is just a player but we can't connect as a client if there is no server existing yet. So we can start as a host and we can see it we spawn in the game and everything works as usual. And for the testing purposes, I have just disabled the enemy spawner because I was getting some errors because we haven't really set it up for the server yet. Next, we can try to connect multiple players to our game. There are many ways to do that. You could also just build the game, then run the build of the game many times and you could connect it. Or the way that I think is better is using the parallel sync package, which will just make a temporary copy of your project so that you can easily connect to the same game with multiple players without having to make build of the game. So go to the internet, search for Unity Parallel Sync, you can hit the first link that is on GitHub and we can just download this whole folder as a zip. Once we have that, we can unzip it, open the folder, open it again, then go to the Parallel Sync folder and the only thing that we need is the editor folder so we can just drag it to the Unity project. Once it is imported, up here in the menu you should see Parallel Sync, so we'll open the Clones Manager and we can just create new clone. This will create a copy of the project, but the Assets folder is linked, so whenever we change something in one copy of the project, it is automatically going to change in other copies of the project as well. And don't worry, it takes just about 2GB, which is not that much. So we can see that it created one clone, so we can just open it in New Editor. So you can see that now I have the project open twice and I can try playing game on both of these. So again, go to the don't destroy on load, go to the network manager. On the first one, which is on the left, I will start it as host and on the right one, I will start it as client. You can see that two players are spawned in, which is correct. So I can try to move on the left screen, but you can see that we have some issues. The first issue is that I'm moving both of these players at the same time and the second issue is that those players are not updating on the client side. And if I try to move with the client, again, both of these players are moving and it is not updating on the server. 
There are two ways that your multiplayer game can work. It can either be server authoritative or client authoritative. When it is server authoritative, it means that all of the data that gets applied to the final game needs to pass through the server. So when the player wants to move, it will send a message to the server, hey, this player wants to move in this direction. Is it correct? Then server calculates the new position for the movement and it sends the data back to all of the clients and updates their positions. This way the players will experience a bit of latency, so when they try to move, the player will actually move a bit later. But it is safer and can protect your game from cheaters a lot better, because the server actually decides on what is going to happen. And if your server is client authoritative, it means that the clients send some data to the server and the server just has to trust the client. So client says, hey, I want to move there. Server says, okay, move there and it is going to update the position for all of the other clients as well. So this way players will experience zero latency, but it doesn't work well for competitive games because cheaters can cheat really easily. For simplicity, I will begin with the client authoritative type and I will create new script that will be syncing the player position. I called it client network transform and it is inheriting from already made network transform, but the issue with this one is that it is only server authoritative which would not work in our case. So we are adding using unity.netcode.components so we can inherit from it and then we are just overriding this wool to make sure that it returns false. This way it will be really simple to make the movement work. We can go back to unity, I will select the player prefab and I'm going to add the client network components to it. Here we can select if we want to sync all of the positions and rotations so we don't really need to sync in the scale, the rotation is also not going to change and because it is just 2D game, we can sync just X and Y. In multiplayer games, it is always the best to send as least data as possible, so in this case we definitely don't need to be syncing the rotation and the scale. Now if I try to move the player, you can see that it is correctly syncing a decline as well, and when I do it the other way around, yep, it seems to be almost working. You can see the animations are still playing on the second player as well, so we only want to be able to control our own player. Because when we are in the game, let's say for the client, in the game we have two prefabs for the players and each one of them has the player script, which is registering the player inputs. So I will just jump to the player script and we want to make sure that if the user is not owner of this player, we will just disable the script so that he can do nothing with it. For that, we will need to override some methods, so I will add using unity.netcode. Instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we can inherit from network behavior, which itself is inheriting from mono behavior, so we get all of the classic functionality of mono behavior and we have some other functions that we can override. And to use network behavior, on the object you need to have the network object component. I'm overriding the function on network spawn, which just triggers when the player connects the game. If the user that is trying to move the player is not owner of this exact player script, then we can just disable it and return from the function. And this will make sure that the player script is only running on the correct object which owns the user. So if I try moving on the host, we can see the position is updating on the client as well, but we are really moving just our own player and the animations are not playing on the second one. When I go to the client, yep, we can move with our own player but not with the other one. Next, I will also make sure that the animations are updating as well, so again I will create new script for that. This time I called it Client Network Animator because it will be syncing the animators, and the nice thing is that Unity already has made Network Animator for us, but this one is server authoritative, so we just need to make it client authoritative, which is pretty simple. Now we can go back to Unity and just add this component to our player. So we have it here. We only need to specify the animator, so we can just drag it down and put it here. And we can see that the position as well as the animations are now correctly updating on other clients as well. You can see that there is a bit of delay, which is just that we need to send the data from the server to the client. And when I move on the client, yep, the animations are playing on the server as well. Another thing I will modify about the players is the camera, because if I move with the client, we can see the camera is still being focused on the same player. When I move on the server, I can't really see the player because it is somewhere off the screen. So again, we'll need to check if the user is owner of the camera. If he is, then we can just keep it enabled, otherwise we'll disable it. 
So I created a new script camera follow, which again is inheriting from network behavior. So we need to add using unity.netcode. And again, when we spawn into the game, we are checking if the user is the owner. If not, we can just turn it off. So I will open the player prefab, go to the camera and add the script. And because the script is inheriting from network behavior, we also need to add network object. And here we can just untake the synchronized transform, which I'm not sure if it even does anything if we don't have the component here, but just in case. But in this case, the network object is not needed because we already have it on the player. So we can see that it is giving us an error so we can just remove the component from the camera. So on the camera, we will have just the camera flow script. So if I'm moving with this player, the camera is flowing it. And when I move with this one, the camera is also following the correct player. So far, I have covered how we can connect multiple players to a server, how we can synchronize their positions, animations, make sure that we move only with the player that we are owning, and how to make sure that the movement of the camera is correct as well. And because this video is already quite long, I will leave the rest of the stuff for the next one, so we can be looking forward to creating some custom network variables with which we will be able to share any data across the server and clients we want. We'll also be running some logic only on the server, such as spawning of the enemies. And we'll also create server authoritative movement and attacking of the enemies, so that players of our game can't cheat that easily. Feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord. If you have any questions, tell me down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.